Happy New Year's, everybody. It's time to talk about my most anticipated films for the brand new year. And in this list, I'm not just going to talk about my top 10, but I also want to go down some honorable mentions as well as five films that I'm just curious about but could not put into my most anticipated. So make sure to leave your thoughts down below, hit that like and subscribe button, and let's get on into this because talking about those five films that I'm curious about, we're starting out with my number five, The Ballerina. If you don't know what this is, it's a brand new John Wick spinoff starring Ana de Armas, and I think the film takes place between John Wick 3 and John Wick 4, and all I have to say is, I hope the action's good. Genuinely. that That's the one thing I'm really worried about is the action not being great because John Wick has had some of the best. Then at my number four is the brand new Lord of the Rings animated movie coming out this December. We don't know anything about this. I mean that because we don't know what the animation style is, what the animation looks like, we haven't seen a trailer, but all I know is that it's a brand new Lord of the Rings movie and I hope it's great. Then at my number three is Hellboy the Crooked Man. Now this is probably not going to be on anybody else's list this year that you go and watch, but it's on my most curious because Hellboy is one of my favorite comic book characters of all time. Time. And all I'm hoping is that it's good. That's all I want it to be. Please. At my number two is Gladiator 2. This actually might be on most people's most anticipated. It is not on mine. Really, Scott has just burned me over the last 10 years of filmmaking, and I'm really hoping that Gladiator 2 is one of the best films he's ever created because the original Gladiator is personally my favorite film of his. Number one most curious film would actually be my most anticipated of this year if we just knew if it was even coming out. That's why I'm curious about it. Is it actually going to make a release date this year? Because it's been delayed indefinitely, and that is Spider Man Beyond the Spider Verse. I cannot wait to see this. The last two films have been some of my favorite films of the last decade and I'm assuming the third film will also be that too. Just as a couple honorable mentions as well before we actually get into the top 10 list we have Fall Guy it looks a bunch of fun the new Godzilla and Kong movie looks great and A Quiet Place Day 1 I, I mean it's a prequel to A Quiet Place following new characters so count me in. Coming down at my number 10 is If. This is the brand new imaginary friends movie from the mind of John Krasinski and all I know is that it reminds me of Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends but in live action and it feels like a movie that Steven Spielberg would have made back in the 80s. And the fact that I'm getting that feeling just from watching the trailer, it looks charming, it looks delightful, it has a great cast such with John Krasinski, Steve Carell, Ryan Reynolds, and it's all taking place if imaginary friends were actually real, where do they go? when their owners forget about them. It's about believing, it's about creativity, it's about delightfulness. I'm all in, count me in. My number nine is Challengers. This is actually one of my most anticipated films from last year, but then it got delayed to this year because of the strikes. And it's one of the first big movies heading to theaters that Zendaya is actually the leading role in. And I say this, yes, she's been in Spider-Man, yes, she was in Malcolm and Marie, but this feels a little bit different. This feels exciting. And I'm not counting Dune either because she was only in the film for a little bit. I know she'll be in more in part two. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But Challengers just looks excellent. It's Luca Guadagnino developing a story that on the surface, when you read the concept, you're like, oh, that seems interesting. Then you see this love triangle that's kind of being intersected. And you're like, whoa, this is getting darker. I'm excited for this just because of those two aspects. But I also think Mike Feist being in here is another big star of it all. And my number eight is Wolves. Now, I am so excited for this movie because it's directed and written by John Watts who you must know from the Spider-Man trilogy and he's excellent in what he did with those but I want to see an actual directing and flair from him because I don't think we get to see a lot of that in those Marvel films specifically and he's made one other film called Cop Car which was pretty decently directed but this one stars Bradley Cooper and George Clooney as two lone wolf fixers who get assigned to the same job. That is exciting nonetheless because any story with two fixers and two detectives having to work alongside each other pertains to have some exciting elements to it. There's not much more other than that that we know of. We haven't even seen a trailer. We have one image and that's basically it, but it looks awesome, and I think John Watts is about to deliver something special here. My number seven is Mickey 17. Now, I know this is based off a book. I have not read the book, but I know someone who did read the book and actually has seen this movie already at an early test screening, and I got a lot of good hearings from that one especially. It's a lot different than people are probably going to be expecting, but it's Bon Joon-ho's next movie. He made Parasite, one of the best films of the last 20 years. I loved Parasite. It was one of my favorite films of that year, and I'm sure for many of you, it was probably your favorite film of that year. But Bong Joon-ho didn't just make Parasite, he's made countless incredible movies. And I nonetheless assume that Mickey 17 will also be an incredible movie. It also stars the likes of Robert Pattinson. It has to do with cloning and sci-fi, and I'm all in. I'm 
number six is Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. This one almost didn't make my list, mostly because I'm curious about this one. Wes Ball is directing this one instead of Matt Reeves, and that's okay to me. Wes Ball is a good director. He did a solid job with the Maze Runner trilogy, but that's all I really know from him, and the Maze Runner trilogy isn't a trilogy that I usually go all back to. But the Planet of the Apes trilogy, the last one, specifically the last two movies, War and Dawn, I go back to a lot. And Planet of the Apes, the original one, is one of my favorite movies, so... You know, this world, this lore, all this stuff, it could easily be not great. There's a couple things that make me more excited for this one. First off, I'm excited because Wes Ball is also announced to be directing the live-action Legend of Zelda movie. He said he wants to do a Hayao Miyazaki type of live-action feel to it. If he's getting Legend of Zelda, I have to imagine that there's been early good buzz about this movie. Second, the other very exciting aspect of this all is the fact that we also get to see more Planet of the Apes now that it's all developed. 300 years later, after Caesar did everything in war, where does it go next? And that's the really exciting part for me. The timeline is a little bit weird to me, but overall, the visual effects look great, the trailer got me excited, and I can't wait to see more. Now we get up to my top five, and my number five is Inside Out 2. I am so excited for this. Pixar is my favorite studio working today. And mostly, I think a lot of these movies should have gone into theaters, not streaming such as Soul, Luca, Turning Red. But what we're looking at now is Inside Out 2. And with what the success of Elemental did, which was a really surprising movie, I think Inside Out 2 is about to do the same. The original Inside Out, I think, is one of the best Pixar movies ever. I love that movie. It's emotional. It's hilarious. It brings that creativity back. And in this one, I think we could potentially be getting into darker territory because she is now a teenager. More emotions are coming in. That little bitch anxiety that lives in me is also in this. And... While we only have the teaser trailer to go off of, I don't really know what the adventure or what kind of places they'll go into the mind or how actually deep they'll get into this. All I know is that we're getting new emotions. I'm excited to see that and I love the original one. So the second one I hope is good. Number number four is Furiosa. Now we do have a teaser trailer for this one and it looks incredible. I love George Miller's Mad Max Fury Road. I think it's one of the best action films ever made. And you know, a prequel sounds pretty tight. You're getting Anya Taylor-Joy, Chris Hemsworth, and again, George Miller coming back to direct this. That all of those things excite me. Nothing worries me there. The teaser trailer gave me the goods and exactly what I expected to see from a Furiosa teaser trailer. And that's all I need to know. I don't need to see anything else. I just want to go and experience this movie. I don't plan on watching anything else for this. I don't plan on reading anything else for it because I literally do not give a shit. I just want to watch this movie. I want to watch cars banging at each other. I want to see action going off. I want to see people dying. And that's what I want to see in a Mad Max movie. Anyone else? We get into my number three, which is Nosferatu. Now, Nosferatu is directed and written by Robert Eggers, who has done incredible movies such as The Witch, The Lighthouse, and of course, most notably, Northman, which was my favorite film of him so far. And he has been trying to make this movie ever ever since The Witch came out, which is saying a lot. And I love The Witch, but I, this is probably my most anticipated project of his because I never thought it would see the light of day. It's already been filmed. It's already done test screenings. I know someone who's seen the movie and they utterly fucking love this movie. And they also said it's very accessible, which makes me also excited. The original Nosferatu movie scared the shit out of me. The imagery still in there kind of still gets under my skin. And I'm assuming the same thing is going to happen here with whatever Robert Eggers is crafting. So count me in for all of that. Now we get to my number two. And my number two, I went back and forth putting some of my number one. Some of my excitement is tinkered just a little bit because it got pushed from last year, but I'm still utterly excited for it because the original one was my favorite of that year, and that is Dune Part 2. I cannot wait to see what Denis Villeneuve has in store for us. I think right now he is currently one of the best directors working today, and I think when it's all said and done, when he is gone, and we're all gone probably, he will be hailed as one of the best directors of all time. And Dune for me... I was so obsessed with that movie, I went and read the book, and I absolutely loved the book, and I thought the book was so incredibly well made, and knowing that the back half of the book is now what we're getting, this is the thing I think most people are very excited for, and now knowing that we have the first part, then the second part, and when we go back to rewatch them back to back, it's going to be this big sci-fi fantasy epic that I don't think we get enough of in theaters anymore, at least to the scale of sense, and I'm so excited to see whatever changes they make, whatever things they keep close to the book, all the new interactions of how they bring in new characters such as Christopher Walken or Austin Butler or even Florence Pugh's character. There are so many exciting things they can do, but also I know we're getting more worms in this and that's that's awesome. My number one most anticipated film for this entire year is Deadpool 3 or Deadpool and Wolverine. 
and it's also my most worrisome. Mostly because I was not the biggest fan of Deadpool 2. The more and more I sit on that film, it, it just grades on me and does not work for me. And it was a disappointment, I think, in the long run. Because the first Deadpool movie is one of my favorite comic book films of all time. I think the romance between Vanessa and Deadpool is perfect. I think the humor is great. I think the center of that, that romance, is a big key piece of why it works. I also think it's just a brilliantly written movie. But when I look at Deadpool, I saw that movie, just as a point of reference, I saw that movie four times, four or five times opening weekend. Then every week it was in theaters, I went and saw it one or two more times. I was obsessed with this movie. When it came out on Blu-ray, I was obsessed with it. And I still am to this day. I love re-watching this one. I know it back to back, like the back of my hand. I can quote this movie like crazy. And Deadpool is just that. It's everything and more to what I want. And knowing that they're bringing back Hugh Jackman gives me some exciting details. Um, and it also worries me because Logan was a perfect ending for Hugh Jackman. I know they said they're not going to touch that. I just, I don't know what to believe. I also am worried because of all the rumors and leaks of cameos and what cameos can be put into here. I want a Deadpool movie. I want Deadpool interacting with Wolverine and the original cast of Deadpool, and that's what I want. I want them going to the MCU, and that's what it seems like we're getting, but how much of that is intertwined with what needs to happen in the MCU to make a conjoined story, and how much of it is an actual solo journey for Deadpool? That is my biggest worry with this movie. And also having Sean Levy, who, do not get me wrong, is a great director. He's just never done anything R-rated. I know he's done some things in Stranger Things. I know he's a heavy, big producer over there. I also know he did Real Steel, which had great stuff to that. The Adam Project, so many things. I, I mean, I've loved a lot of his projects. He's just never done an R-rated thing. I'm not worried with him mixing around with a big cast. I'm more worried about with what the MCU needs to do. And I think the MCU's been a bit of a mess, so I'm hoping Deadpool 3 really brings it back in. But God, I am worried. But again, it's my most anticipated, so take that as what you will. We interrupt this program to bring more honorable mention for Chris Duckman's movie, Shelby Oaks, which is officially coming out next year, technically this year, 2024. I am so excited to see what Chris Duckman has in store. I hope this scares the shit out of me. It's my top 10 most anticipated films for next year. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like and subscribe button. And again, have a happy New Year's, everybody. A lot of cool videos coming out this week. We have a little bit more editorial stuff coming out over the next couple weeks until movies start actually coming back into theaters. And then I get married in February. So I'm excited. Thank you so much again. And of course, until next time, stay classy.